Hey everyone, my name is Vlad and today I want to talk about my second most used lens. This lens is a 7 Artisans 12mm f2.8. Yes, this is uh, one more 7 Artisans lens which I own, but this one I've bought with my own money. I bought it secondhand a couple of years ago and it cost me something like 77 British pounds or something around 100 US dollars. So I consider it quite cheap and in my opinion for the amount of money I've paid for it, it's really nice lens. Let's talk a bit more about it. As I said, this lens is 12mm f2.8 and I've used it to shoot architecture photography, interiors, street photography and some time lapses and uh, you can shoot everything you want with it. I've seen people shooting really nice portraits with it environmental portraits and uh, it performs really well. This 7 Artisan lens is a fully manual lens, a manual focus, manual aperture, there is no contacts and uh, it doesn't send any EXIF information to your camera. This lens is available in few different mounts, it is APS-C lens and it's available for Fujifilm, Canon ASM, Sony E-mount and Micro Four Thirds. Let's talk about build of this lens. This lens is fully metal, including the built-in lens hood, but lens hood is a quite small one, so lens is still compact, small and compact. Unfortunately, there is no field thread on this lens and for some people it might be a deal breaker. Fortunately, they have an adapter which uh, receives 77 mm filter and you can use your polarizer filter or ND filter with this lens that way. Okay, next is the lens cap. This lens cap it's not the one I'm used to, so it's quite unusual for me and it fits directly on this built-in lens hood. It fits quite securely, but it rattles a little bit, which not a big deal. And uh, after a few years of using it, and as I said, I bought it uh, secondhand, it's still uh, secure, so I think there is nothing to be worried about. The only thing, if you're gonna lose this one, it's probably gonna be quite difficult to find a replacement. But I still have mine, so as I've said, it's quite secure. Okay, let's move to the focusing ring, and the focusing ring is quite smooth and provides just enough resistance. It's, in my opinion, it's not too much, not too little, so... I'm pretty happy with it. Aperture ring is uh, smooth as well, but in my opinion it's uh, a bit too soft, so it's really easy to knock uh, the setting off. And I did it a couple of times, not like it's... Uh, it wasn't a big deal, but still there is a possibility. The mount is, seems to be built quite well, this uh, shiny metal polish. But the thing is, I have a little problem with this, as first of all, uh, lens cap, it doesn't uh, stay in place very well. You need to really push it hard so it would stick uh, securely. And if you are not doing it till the very end, it might actually fall off. Another thing, when I mount it on the camera, there is a little bit of movement. You can feel it, but uh, it no longer bothers me. It was a bit strange when I got it. But I can't really complain about it, as I've got it secondhand and it's not necessarily the fault of the lens, who knows what happened uh, to this lens before me. And as I've said, it's just a tiny slight movement, so it's not a big deal. And to be fair, I used to have 5-7 Artisans lenses and this is the first lens that have this kind of issue. Let's talk about things I've noticed when I've been using this lens. First of all, you need to know that this lens has some uh, focus breathing issues. And the focus breathing is when you change your focus distance, it actually kind of changes the focal length. So in other words, you can say that this lens can be kind of between 12 and 14 millimeters if, instead of being just 12. It's mostly noticeable when you're shooting video and you don't really notice such difference when you're shooting uh, stills. It never was a problem for me, so I would count as a minor issue. Focusing with this lens is extremely simple. Due to it being such a wide angle and the uh, depth of field being uh, quite deep because of that, you can actually set it uh, on infinity and everything beyond 2-3 meters is basically in focus and uh, you don't really need to worry about it anymore. Minimal focus distance is something like uh, 20 centimeters, which lets you compose in a really interesting way. Aperture ring is clickless and that is probably good for video, but it doesn't bother me for stills anyway, so it's a matter of preference, I would say. 
That's pretty much all about handling of this lens, so let's move to the image quality. Talking about the sharpness of this lens, I would say it's pretty sharp in the center. I wouldn't expect it to be sharp in the corners, it's a bit soft, but considering the wide angle nature of this lens and also the price of this lens, I would say it is expected. To have corner-to-corner -corner sharpness, it's probably you have to pay for quite much more money than you would pay for this one. <laughs> but stepping down aperture a bit, it definitely helps and corners get better. And sharpness in the center gets better as well. The main thing you need to be aware is the flaring, and most wide-angle lens would have some issue with flaring, but this one is quite a strange one, because when you shoot uh, in direction of the light source, it actually produces some kind of halo or some kind of uh, bright vignetting, which uh, can actually ruin your image, and, uh, <clears throat> and that is something that you need to be aware of. As this lens is ultra-wide lens, distortions are expected and it can be easily fixed in the Lightroom. Same goes for the vignetting, so it does have vignetting and you can easily fix it. I'll show some images and you can judge by yourself. Just a quick one, right now I'm editing this video about 7 Artisans 12mm f2.8 and while I've been working on this review I received another lens, it's also 12mm f2 and uh, that is gonna be my next review and if you are interested then please subscribe, press bell icon so YouTube will notify you or it might be already on the channel depending when you're watching it and then I'll put a link somewhere here, here or in the description. That's it, uh, let's get back to the conclusion. As a conclusion, this lens is awesome and for the price you can't really go wrong. As I've said, this is my second most used lens. And uh, the main point is it does have some flaws, but if you learn to live with them, it can help you to produce great results. That is my honest opinion on this lens. Thank you for watching, I hope it was helpful. Please like and subscribe. Also, you can check a link in the description to my blog where I have uh, written down all the reviews and trying to keep them up to date with uh, fresh images. Thank you, see you next time!